Hey everybody. So in the last two or three weeks, I've been talking to a couple people in the comments sections on some YouTube videos. And one of the biggest problems that they're having, and it's a very, very common problem, is with what I call weldback or meltback when they're cutting thin gauge steel, like, you know, eighth of an inch stuff, some that's smaller than a quarter of an inch or three sixteenths of an inch steel. It tends to weld itself back together. And Look, if you're no, if you're watching this video, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, you're you're cutting along, and you can see right away that your cut is welding itself back together or melting it back back together. Before long, you're just straight at war with that cut. You've forgotten all about the line that you're supposed to be cutting. You you're raising your torch tip to try to blow that blow that molten steel out of there. Uh, you've dropped all pretense of any kind of good torch cutting technique you're just full on at war with that cut and at the end of the cut that piece doesn't fall off you know you're gonna have to beat it off with a hammer uh, it's gonna mean a whole heck of a lot of grinding and your fitments gonna be off you know your your line is gonna be all squiggly and stuff because you you've forgotten all about a straight cut and technique and everything so it's just a really big pain in the butt. It's very, very frustrating. I know how that is. And none of the pros talk about how to really cut thin steel. They don't talk about weld back or melt back. They don't talk about why you're getting that. In this video, I'm going to do that. And I'm going to tell you what the simple answer is. And if you don't want to watch all the way to the, to the end of the video uh, to see what I've got for you, I'll tell you the answer right now. You're too hot. Okay? You're too hot. So... Watch these cuts here. I'm going to do the best I can. It's the hottest day of the year so far in my hometown. And I've got one day off to do this. So hopefully this helps. Uh, and thanks for watching the video, man. Okay, one thing I'm going to tell you before I get started is it is important that you clean your steel and clean the appropriate size cutting tip uh, for the job. For thin steel, you're going to be using triple lot cutting tip, uh, zero, zero, zero size cutting tip. Uh, that's going to give you the appropriate uh, fuel air mixture out of your tip. Um, so use the right size cutting tip. Make sure it's clean. If you don't know how to clean it, uh, there's probably a thousand videos on how to clean a torch cutting tip. So I'm not going to go through that, but... Um, the other thing is clean your steel. The piece that you're going to cut needs to be clean. If it's rusty, if it's got a bunch of mill scale on it, clean that stuff off. Just hit it with a hard rock. That's all I do. Uh, some guys, the pros will tell you, use a wire wheel or a little one of those little sandpaper flapper disc things. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Just clean it up. Rust especially. Rust is pyromorphic. So it's going to uh, not really do really well with a flame. Okay, it's pyromorphic. So that fire out of your torch tip is going to have a negative effect when it comes to that steel or that rust. And also, if you take off the rust in the mill scale, that's just less to get sucked up into your torch tip. And yeah, even though that fuel and, and oxygen is blowing out of there, blowing out of the torch tip, there is a sucking effect. It's called a venturi effect, just like in a carburetor. Um, you don't want any of that. Get rid of all that stuff. That way you have less to suck up into your torch tip if you tend to dip it down a little bit uh, for bad technique or whatever the case it is. Okay, so just one more tip. Use clean steel and a clean, appropriately sized cutting tip. And after that, it's all systems go, baby. Okay, so I already gave you the answer. The reason why your thin gauge metal is welding back on itself or melting back on itself behind your torch tip is because you're melting it you're getting it too hot okay you've got too much gas going through there um, or maybe not the appropriate you know pressure whatever I, I don't know how to say it but you're too hot you're melting it think of this right here remember this concept you cannot slice a puddle of liquid right you can't slice a puddle of liquid so if you are liquefying your steel 
of course it's going to just close right back up on itself, okay? If you take a knife through a, a pan of water, that water is going to obviously close right back up behind your knife, right? So it's the same exact concept, even with steel. So what you want to do is not melt it. You don't want to heat it up so much, okay? You're making lava out of that stuff, and lava is going to flow right back together, man. So that's, that's the main takeaway right there. So what's the answer? The answer is heat it up just enough so that the air can blow through it. Your oxygen can blow through it when you press down on your trigger, right? Uh, think of it as the difference between um, like a stick of butter or just a cup of melted butter. Which one are you going to be able to slice off? What are you going to be able to slice a piece off better with? A puddle of melted butter or a, a stick of butter? So the idea is to heat your steel up, this thin gauge stuff, heat it up enough to where that air will blow through it, but not so much that it loses its solid characteristic, okay? Let me show you on this piece of steel right here. I don't know if you if you can see this, the lighting in my garage isn't that great right now. But if you look, this edge, it's still pretty square. Now I cut, this was the top side of this piece right here when I cut it. And you can see the top piece, that top edge is still square. It's, it, it's, it's not probably 90 degrees, but it's not melted all, it's not melted all over the place, okay? That's still flat all the way to the edge. It's flat from here all the way to the edge because I did, I didn't liquefy that steel, okay? It wasn't too hot. That's the main thing, man. If you'll remember that you cannot slice a puddle of any liquid, then, uh, I mean, your weld back problems are over. So what's the answer? Dial back that heat. Dial down your heat, okay? Check your uh, your graphs or whatever, your little chart. Your chart will probably tell you, I think it's for thin gauge stuff, I think it's three to five PSI on your gas, your acetylene. Um, if you're at three, fine. If you're at two and a half, fine. Whatever's gonna work for your uh, gauge of steel. If you're cutting really super thin gauge steel, whatever, you might be just slightly outside of that that range, that's fine. Those ranges are just um, guides, they're starting points. It gets you close, it gets you in the ballpark, that's fine. I think my acetylene right now is set at th three um, to cut this for this video. Um, that's at the very low range. I don't want to melt that stuff into a puddle. That's the that's the key takeaway, man. You're too hot. If your if your thin gauge stuff is welding itself back together, melting back together, you're just too hot. You're liquefying it. All right, that's the main tip right there. You're going to be able to see this when I cut it, but just to show you, I'm cutting eighth of an inch steel here for this video. Okay, for this piece. I just, I got it too hot. I put too much gas in there. Uh, and I just wanted to show you what you're probably looking at when you see that your steel is melting back. This piece did not fall off. I had to beat it with a hammer to break it off. And uh, that's it. I just turned up the, the gas too much. So that's what we got right here. Now, when we look at this cut that I just made, uh, to show you my weld back or my melt back here. I really want you to focus on I guess what is the bottom edge of this cut and the very right side the very end of the cut Look at that very top or the very bottom edge of the cut. Can you see that it's melted? That piece of steel now you're looking at it the way it was sitting on the table as I cut it that is the top surface right there. The very edge of that cut, the bottom edge, you can see it's rippled. That means it's melted. I got it way too hot. I did that on purpose, but it was way too hot and it melted it. That is no longer a flat 
surface of steel right there and it means really bad fitment that's going to take a lot of grinding to fix that so for this cut i dialed back the acetylene notice how much preheat i did right there just an inch or two and for thin gauge stuff it doesn't take any preheat at all none at all it's really thin stuff so i angled back the torch that helps a lot on thin steel nice even speed there and she falls right off less gas less heat okay here's a little extra tip for you guys uh, that's going to help you with your technique and getting straight cuts uh, it, it's just it's called a burn bar and all it is is a piece of angle iron right here just a piece of angle iron and I just MIG welded a little handle right onto it right here this little u-bolt uh, handle and what you would do is if you're gonna cut this piece of steel here at this line or whatever line you're at right especially if it's a longer line and you, and it and it's it matters if you're gonna do a straight cut uh, for fitment purposes or whatever all you're gonna do is you're gonna put your burn bar right on that line right there let me get it close enough right there right about on that line now and if you're using uh, chalk line like I use uh, then you're gonna want to put this right up next to your line okay Depending on how sharp your your uh, pencil is, your soapstone pencil, but put it right there, and you'll and you'll figure it out where to put that burn bar. Clamp this burn bar down to your piece or to your table or whatever. Keep it straight. Or a lot of times I'll just kind of freehand burn bar this. That's why I put the handle on it. And what you're going to do is you're going to use that hose clamp on your torch cutting tip, and that's going to rest right on the top of this line right here and what that's going to do is that's going to keep your torch tip the same level the same height off of your cutting piece your steel here and it's going to guide that torch in a straight line uh, super super simple tool you can get more complicated than what i've done just a little piece of angle iron right there the appropriate size and uh what you want to do is you want to get a piece of angle iron that is large enough but not too large large enough so that your hose clamp on your torch cutting tip is going to rest right on there and the blue cone of your torch the blue cones are going to be just at the bottom of your angle iron right here just at the bottom of that that's going to keep the uh the the blue cones riding right on your piece of steel that you're cutting so just a burn bar, takes about five minutes to make one. Here's a shot of my hose clamp, little tw 10 or 20 cent piece of hardware here. I put it on the torch cutting tip and I adjust it up or down so that the cutting tip is the appropriate height off of the material that I'm cutting. That's pretty much it. 10 or 20 cents set you right up when you adjust the height of your hose clamp on your cutting tip you want to adjust it so that the screw is going to ride right on top of your angle iron burn bar and the blue cones of your flame is going to ride right on top of your steel that you're cutting it's about maybe three sixteenths of an inch high you can do it without the flame on or whatever just look at it adjust the height of your hose clamp so that your tip looks just like this on your burn bar for this cut I used the hose clamp on the burn bar clamped it all down to the piece notice how very little preheat I gave that was too much I didn't even need to do any preheat on this stuff at all this is eighth of an inch steel zero preheat required the screw of my hose clamp rides right along the top of that angle iron nice steady speed same height off the cut piece 
and she falls right off. Look at that. Okay, guys, that really is it. Uh, a couple things. The main takeaway is if your thin gauge stuff is melting back on itself right after your torch tip, right behind your tip, you're just too hot. So stop liquefying the metal and you're going to be just fine. Also, if you expect to cut steel of any thickness, whether it's an eighth inch thickness or two inch thickness or whatever, if you expect to cut that stuff without any slag at all at the bottom, then your expectations are just way too high. And I can't help you with that. Uh, look at this piece that I just cut here. Okay. On this edge, I don't know if you can see it, but I haven't dressed this piece up at all. Look, this is the edge. This was the top surface right here as I cut it. That is pretty freaking square. Look at that. It doesn't look like the bottom edge, but the bottom edge still has slag. If I'm going to weld this, I mean, if I'm in a hurry, that's ready to weld. But if I'm not in a super big hurry, I'm going to hit this thing with a file or a grinder or whatever. I'm going to knock some of the slag off. That's it. I mean, to a certain extent, you are melting it, but you're not melting it so much that you're getting that weld back, that melt back. Okay, so you can see that's a really good cut right there. And if I'm going to weld this piece onto anything, I'm going to have to knock some of this stuff off here. No big deal. So don't expect to cut anything and just have it fall to the floor and be ready to weld. So, <laughs> you know, there's that. Uh, not for sure how you found my channel, but... Uh, I hope this helps, and if you got anything out of this, you know, tell a friend. I'm not asking you to share this video and like and subscribe and all that other stuff. I'm a truck driver. I get one day off a week, uh, so I don't post a lot of videos. But um, if you have any questions about this stuff, just let me know in the comments, and I'll do my absolute best to answer your questions and make videos. My wife is mad as all hell when I do these videos because I only have one day off a week and you know she's not part of it <laughs> sometimes so anyways I hope this helps and uh, spread what you just learned to somebody else who might be having problems with this stuff have a blast guys